<clears throat> I want y'all to see this real quick. Maybe I might gain something. Tyler Olivara, y'all go uh, subscribe to his channel right now. Link will be in the description. Really be in the description. This is New Orleans, the murder capital of America. What's the biggest problem out here in New Orleans? <laughs> it's like we walk in on eggshells. It's that freaking scary. I mean, the Always you been shot eight times, twice on both of my arm, twice on both of my leg, one in my chest. You remember? Check the news. Damn. Now comes the record as the murder capital of the nation. But why is everyone killing each other? And what can be done to fix it? I met up with a local rapper, Noon Orleans, to find out. I mean, anywhere in New Orleans is the jungle. It happens anywhere in New Orleans. Kidnapping, carjacking, all of the above. If I were to leave my car parked out here with the keys in it, it wouldn't be out here for an hour. Really? I guarantee you that. And 10 minutes in, we stumbled upon a Bro, that's just like anywhere. That's just like, that's like in San Antonio and shit. The same uh, shit over here, man. man. Right Check right this out. Oh, said someone just got killed right around the corner. That's what he just said. Someone's literally murdered right here? Yeah, I don't know <clears> what specific <throat> spot, but when I came through, I saw the f***ing police call. It's like, it's like, like when you bro, savage, bro. You and you used to shit like that, man. I didn't see if anything happened. Okay. How is it living out here? It's not bad. Okay. When you go for a walk at night, you looking behind your shoulder or what? <laughs> it's not bad. I don't usually walk in right though. Has New Orleans gotten more dangerous over the years? Yeah, very dangerous. It's wicked in the streets, bro. What do you mean by that? This guy, hey, Tyler, man, is taking it on the other, a uh, whole nother level, bro. Hey, Check the news. You can oh, see. I see the news. Yeah. We be strapped out here? I think I'm going to make him a song. Did you see anyone get killed out here? Yeah, I seen that growing up all my life. I probably seen my first shooting when I was maybe like five or six, just walking up the street, walking around the corner to my mama house, seeing if she got out work. And I seen a dude, he just put out a gun and told a nigga like, where my $20 at? And he shot at him over $20. Scary out here. Scary out here? $20, bro. What do you mean by that? You never know when you're gonna get mugged. You never know when you're gonna get jacked. I mean, it's like we walking on eggshells. <coughs> it's that freaking scary. You yeah. scared to come out your door. I mean, it's just scary. I'm gonna do this game. All right. The crazy part is, a lot of these cycles stem from the 90s and shit, bro. He kind of looks like Hurricane Chris, fight. right? But back then, even if they was killers, they had morals, they had principles. You know what I'm saying? Nobody didn't kill children. They'll call and tell you, we about to come around there for you. Put the kids and the ladies inside. Put the women inside. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We coming for you, me and you. We can meet in the middle of the street. Be lucky to graduate for real. A lot of people from when I was in middle school, they not here with me today. You feel me? That's what another thing I learned. A lot of the kids that be innocent, they, they could die too. Yeah. It could be anybody. True bro. shit. It, you don't got to just be in no streets, gang. Um, bro. The first time somebody pulled a gun on me, I was nine years old, bro. And it wasn't even a killer. It was the police. So it's like from those type of experience, you learn how to approach life from staring on the barrel of his gun. You feel what I'm saying? We just playing basketball. My brother-in-law, bro. Yeah. Long live Joshua yeah, and that boy Adams. seems he was like Hurricane Chris. <laughs> and he kidding. wasn't doing nothing. My sister <clears throat> was giving Joshua birth Adams. to his son. You dig? Yeah. He never got to meet his son. He left the hospital to go get my sister slippers. You feel what I'm saying? While she was delivering their baby. Didn't make it back to the hospital to see his son get born. The police stole him. Over some they slippers? Killed. They left me for dead, but why the f would you doubt me? Man, I come from up. public housing, pay mama bills as a child, never knew shit about it. Oh, the Tyler, I see your transitions, bro. This from torture and pain. Before this mic made me sane, I wrote this all on my brain. Some of my bitches just changed. Now they gonna pack up your funeral. That's why I The man with the little mic. Young niggas dying from cops. But, but that little mic packs a punch. Cause you could die with a cop. That was crazy. You just spoke like a whole social commentary in that rap. If it don't come from the heart, it ain't New Orleans. Whoa. I then learned why New Orleans got into hey. rapping in the first place and how crime and violence has impacted them. I learned how to write raps because my pops was incarcerated my entire life bro, up until I graduated high school. And I had to learn how to write letters to him. That's how we communicated. Year and a half ago, Shout out all the pops that are locked a up. series of funerals for me. I went to over 10 funerals from some of the closest people that I love. We sweep shit under the rug. Take it on our chin and go. That we numb the violence. You know, you got a lot like that fentanyl shit. I lost, like, we just put it like all the skeletons in the closet, man. Doses this year. Crime, violence, gangs, and drug addiction seem to be baked into the nasty, culture bro. here. And so we headed to the infamous Chef Street, known for prostitution and showing the lengths people go to make money out here. This is apparently where a lot of prostitution goes down. Women are selling their bodies on the streets. Hey. But a lot of them do have like That's just out there like that? Yeah, dangerous out there. And it's protected. They, they shoot behind the holes. Actually? That's a fact, bro. Nine times out of ten, they do have somebody with them. They protected by somebody in New Orleans. Females not just gonna be on a nowhere by itself. show. That chick right there, found one. Uh -huh. What are you doing out here? Man, that's crazy as hell, bro. That shit just out in the open, like red light district. I wouldn't say I'm the, I'm like, I wouldn't call me a hoe. See, you wouldn't either. No, 
I'm not calling you out. Yeah, yeah, I know I got hella niggas and stuff, but um, yeah, I just got niggas. I got a lot of niggas. What do you mean by that? No, that's like trying to ask me my body count. No, I'm not asking about that. <laughs> these are my classmates. Like, okay. these are people I went to school with. So you've been, um, you've been sorry. that long? <clears throat> Is that what's going on? I mean, yeah. I mean, I've been fucking since I've been like 15. Cause no, I'm really not a hoe. I'm really like a wife type, really like. Now I'm a wife, like I got, I got, you know, a hood marriage. I got one in jail and I got my older nigga always. He really my baby daddy. Well, any last words about New Orleans? I mean, the food always good, dick good always. Everything, I hear you the best for real. Is this street right now known for like prostitution? Certain sections of it. Yeah. They try to run them off but they come back. What's the biggest problem out here in New Orleans from your perspective? Uh, I don't know if I'd want to say. What do you mean? Yeah. Fuck that dude. That's fucked up. I thought we, we I thought we were grown. I thought we were better than that. <laughs> what do you mean? I mean, by okay, that? speak your truth, but they want I thought we were Is past that shit. Blacks and whites out here? All the time. Like I said, no, they, they want don't. everything for free. Hey, who wouldn't want something for free, bro? My grandfather was a slave. You know, if you give them an inch, they want a mile. Do you think people would agree with you? Yes. You're hearing, are y'all hearing this shit? What can you do about it? Uh, I wouldn't want to say. What would you say? No, I wouldn't. I can't say that. <laughs> You've already said so much. Yeah, he'll probably be the ones that shoot him or something like that, man. So a mass shooter, dude. Here? Put He's that motherfucker in jail. Oh, oh shit. Oh, bitch man, ass. man, I didn't come over there. Yeah, it might have been some trouble, right? Yeah. He slapped his mouth. I, I, was, I didn't even know how to respond. I was like, damn. Yeah, but he that shit out on camera, yeah? yeah. He gonna get himself. No. From the outside looking in, it was easy to judge these working girls. But New Orleans emphasized that people out here were doing anything to survive. It's, it's mandatory that you hustle in the city of New Orleans. Are you not going to survive? There's no resources. There's nobody coming to save you. So I'm 18 years old. I need a job. What am I doing? Are you robbing somebody? Okay, it's sad to see. Yeah, as kids decisions. making bad decisions, yeah. right? I won't consider none of them as being evil, but. You know, the government, society, whoever, the, the, the judicial system, they'll paint you as that as a child. But for the majority, man, all these kids really needed somebody to talk to. If I pissed off the wrong person out here on the road, what are the chances they're strapped and they'd be willing to shoot me? It's over Sorry about the ads. Sorry about chance that they strapped. I mean, I'm gonna shoot you out here. As we drove through New Orleans, I noticed a lot of these buildings look damaged or destroyed. That's life in New Orleans right there. Apparently, this was the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina that hit New Orleans in 2005, destroying homes, businesses, the city, and countless lives. But I wondered how the trauma from Katrina impacted and developed the next generation of criminals who grew up in these shelters and experienced it all as kids. We lived in shelters and experienced homelessness at a different level Damn. than any <coughs> other American. I was sleeping I remember in that. houses myself. They ain't really I, I remember we had a whole like you fit in for hotel new rooms. people a lot of uh, school that came on this side of the city. We're in the east right now. When that was so going on, they grew up thinking they were so they cool, man. They had badass accents and like that. People got guns pointed at them. They just trying to go use the restroom. I'm talking about little girls have to take a shower in the same. A lot of them were really strong though. His strong, not knowing if he a pedophile or his background or anything. Sure. You know what I'm saying? So growing up in them type of conditions, a scar you mentally. It's more than PTSD. It's like at war, bro, in America. You had to live again <clears throat> your whole life just wiped away in a matter of a moment. It was one of the worst experiences ever. Yeah. It did. Seeing Man, people, that's disgusting, bro. Was at the time. Has New Orleans recovered from that since? No. Hey, y'all, y'all new generation, y'all, y'all better be happy, man, because Katrina, many people are trying to through some shit. Build their city through starting their own businesses and turning their culture and history into a positive opportunity. I met up with the owner of Chicken and Watermelon to understand how important entrepreneurship is for the future of New Orleans. Uh, you own a business out here? Yeah, Chicken and Watermelon. And where did the name come from? It's, it's kind of funny. I'm gonna say it like this: back in the day, they raised chickens, they sold watermelons. Uh, yeah. They just put a bad connotation on it. To make it seem like it's a bad thing. <clears throat> Crazy. Like that how shit sounds good as hell. Ownership and business ownership for the youth out here. Man, if you really want to be successful in life, start your own business. The education is dumbed down. The charter schools, they dumbed down. They ain't trying to teach the kids nothing. And if you talk to the kids, they slow. Yeah. Man, it, it, I, somehow kids, like the mixture school, sounds pretty good. Still take that, that hustle mentality and change to something else and learn as you go. There's all kinds of ways to hustle, man. You got to find something to sell, not drugs. 
I love how he's turned that negative stereotype into a positive business opportunity. Yeah, What's your name, man? I'm Josh. Josh, my name's Tyler. This is the Barber Shop. How long have you had this No place? cap. Going on, what, four years now? How important is it having a hustle out here in New Orleans? Very important. Yeah. If you look at the city right now, only certain parts of the Pay city attention. Is Pay attention. Pay attention. Post Katrina, right? You will be seeing that, okay, there's Shout out all the barbers out there, man. a lot of New Orleanians to do because the city is lacking resources. Look, look at the record labels. We don't got no record labels in New Orleans. Think about it, kids just won't have fun. I think it start with us teaching the kids and like wow for the future okay. of the kids you saw that bro it was that was all that that underwater to break the cycle of violence was in the next generation of kids but with their idols being drill rappers talking about gang violence and murdering each other it was clear it impacted Yo, i had cash money and no limit youth from birth <clears throat> leading to kids wanting to emulate their favorite rapper pursuing the life of a gangster rapper shooting up their ops and getting shot themselves oh the i rapper, thought that kid was playing rapper, that piano that melody that the gang life is no joke what's your name three Ready to spit some bars for us? Yeah, I got you. I got okay. you. No, that's hey, going on right man. now, bro. My trap go crazy. Your shit moving and nigga, you lazy. I run it up to my mama I made it. Try to take some of your brain on the pavement. Niggas be bitches, they don't want to smoke. Try to take some of the glitter I told. Trying to control my ain't a remote. I was down on my dick. I was crying for hope. Bells and bells and bells and bitches. I run it up trying to get to the riches. I'm in my bag and they deep in their feelings. I ain't trying to talk. Let niggas just listen. Slide on these block. Niggas better be cool. I just want I ain't trying to be rude. Head shot. You know where I'm at. No leg shot. Ain't for the neck. And everything all the head. You boys can freestyle. This is all your life story coming into to bars out here? Right? How many times you got hit, bro? Eight times. <laughs> twice in my I like how Tyler uh, added the beat in the, beat in the background. Chest, you know? You've been shot eight times? Yeah. Holy sh. Thank God yeah. you're alive. Who, who shot you? I don't know. Is it that hey, Tyler, you? I got yeah. some bars too, fam. They just shooting shit up here. Yeah, just wrong place, wrong time, yeah. bro. How close this was to your heart? Two, three inches, you hear me? I was blessed by two, three inches. Okay, you have a kid? I got three. You got three? Yeah. They inspire you to keep going and just keep yeah. fighting for this dream? Most definitely. I got a little girl on the way here, man. Do you think the music impacts the next generation of kids in a bad way at all? Yeah, yeah, most definitely. Most definitely. That that ties into what I be telling my little young boys. Like, y'all don't got to do this. Dang. See young and I already got three. You hear me? Yeah. You hear me? See, they watch a music video. Everybody in a music video throwing Dracos and Glocks and switches in the camera and shit. When they grow up, they gonna feel the need to like, when I make me a music video, finally make me a music video, you hear me? I gotta give me a Draco, I gotta give me a Glock, or a Switch and all that. No, you don't need that shit, bro. To all the young boys, y'all ain't gotta do that shit. Nine to five, just as good as hustling. Sliding on the clock, just as good as sliding on the block, brother. No cap. <laughs> Not everyone is as lucky as him, and a lot of people die due to gun violence. With murders happening every day, countless kids are left He's making sense. strong parental figures. Dude, Tyler brings streets, insight, man, around the whole world, bro. Like Kids get locked up, and the cycle of violence and crime fuck continues. Yeah, you gotta break them, them curses, man. It be like generational For curses, real. We For still real. Be carrying on, family fighting, and people not speaking to each other the kids are the future it starts with teaching them taking them now and moving continues them, continues them break the cycle we bro. never had because it's way Come easier on. than it was back then we didn't have the resources you know so noon took us to a local middle school that his buddy taught at that's goal was to give these kids a safe place to learn and build skills for the future without having to turn to the streets to make money if you fill these kids time with something positive then they don't have time to do anything negative the more knowledge these kids have the more power they have they don't realize how great they can truly be um we have music art we have culinary if i know my kid is in my band room playing the horn i know they're not in somebody's car stealing their stuff you want to be producers how how so the hell does he get into the school i'd be like man it's crazy sorry about the ads like but how does he school. make it into the school, dude? The, class, the space to really just open up creatively and just yeah. let they, you know, let everything flow. You feel like this is like a home away from home? Yeah, because it got me out a lot of stuff. The reason why this band is important is because this gives the kids another opportunity to basically like get away from a lot of different things that they, you know, these kids go through a lot. Like, Comment, is that facts? Some lost parents, kids that go home probably didn't eat in the night. This band is like an outlet for them to like basically get away from all of that. And before I left, the proud band teacher wanted to show me the talent hope so. and dedication these kids had, but only after a little discipline. Sometimes I feel like, man, males really shouldn't be, but you know, I can't say that same thing because the females do the same shit to kids at schools, school, sexual learn. crimes and shit. All this other side <clears> stuff, all just too many follow. If you want to follow something, why you don't follow the good things in life?
Like seriously, y'all won't follow everything negative. Nothing positive, but everything negative. Because it's starting to, y'all starting to put other kids in the hey. You don't care about the next man. You're selfish. Get your mind right. Too many of y'all in the hallway. For what? You kind of start to learn, <coughs> man. A dog, you have to start taking this education stuff serious. Open it up. Bang horns up. Follow the good things, guys. <laughs> Despite the traumatic backgrounds and unstable homes a lot of these kids probably have, a good school system and a teacher that actually cares might be enough to break the cycle. Like that Paul Wall and Kameen or whatever it is. That was awesome. You're laying down the law in there too. It's very, very important that somebody stay on them. All right, who wants to hear somebody different versions of a band? Better people yeah. for the society for the next I want to hear that version of that song in the yeah. marching band. Up, run his numbers up on the streaming services. I want to see this man with 100k subscribers by the end of the day. Noon or leans with a Z. Also, whoever has the most viewed TikTok. Hey, I love his content. What do y'all think? Uh, should we have more videos like this? Leave a comment. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. If you don't know, you do now. It's I am Dex. Tyler Oliveira. Y'all go subscribe. Last week's winner was this guy. Good luck, guys. Subscribe to Tyler.